you've clearly got your eye on Apple Vision Pro and what it could mean for healthcare. And trust me, you're not alone. We've got a pile of fascinating material here, everything from actual surgeons' accounts to think pieces on the future of digital health. Let's break down the hype and see what's really possible, shall we? So everyone's talking about Apple Vision Pro, but from your expert perspective, what really sets it apart? What's got people buzzing beyond just the Apple of it all? It's the level of precision they've achieved, particularly with the retinal imaging and eye tracking. Okay. We're not just talking about following your gaze on the screen. This yeah. is about analyzing your eye's accommodation, how it adjusts to different distances with incredible accuracy. Previous technologies just couldn't capture that level of detail. See, this is where it gets really interesting for me. Because I can picture someone saying, sure, fancy eye tracking, but how does that actually help in a hospital? Give me a real world example of this precision at work. Imagine a surgeon is performing a delicate procedure. Okay. With Vision Pro, they could have real time data overlays projected right onto their field of vision, guided by their exact point of focus. No more looking up at separate monitors, no more fumbling with instruments. Everything they need is right there, precisely where their eyes are looking. That's a game changer. Okay, let's talk about Dr. Massan. This is the neurosurgeon who made headlines using Vision Pro for spine surgery mere days after it launched. Our sources mentioned him. What's the significance of his experience? Dr. Massan's case is fascinating because it highlights both the potential and the challenges of this technology. On the one hand, he was able to use Vision Pro to visualize 3D models of the spine and plan his surgery with incredible precision. This kind of real-time visualization during surgery could be revolutionary. Wow. But as Dr. Masson himself pointed out, those custom-fitted lenses, while great for individual use, are a logistical hurdle in a surgical setting. Each member of the surgical team would need their own calibrated device. Right. It makes sense. As amazing as the tech is, you can't exactly have a whole surgical team huddled around sharing one headset. But the material also highlights how this goes way beyond the operating room. We're talking patient education, mental health applications, even revolutionizing how we approach fitness. Give me an example of how Vision Pro might be used outside of surgery. One area with huge potential is mental health. Imagine a patient struggling with anxiety. Using an app like Saya, they could put on the headset and find themselves transported to a calming virtual meadow. The immersive experience can be incredibly powerful in therapeutic settings. This is where I think about the potential downside of all this immersion. Sure. The source material mentioned the risk of social absence. Basically, as we spend more time in these virtual worlds, could it lead to less real-world interaction, especially for folks already isolated? That's a valid concern, and it's something we need to consider carefully. Technology should enhance our lives, not replace human connection. While apps like Saya offer incredible therapeutic possibilities, it's important to use them thoughtfully and ensure they're not contributing to social isolation, particularly for vulnerable patients. So it's about striking that balance, harnessing the power of these immersive experiences without losing sight of the importance of real-world connections. Now, for all its potential, let's not shy away from the elephant in the room here, the potential downsides. The Stanford study mentioned visual distortion and simulator sickness. Right. That's got to be a barrier to adoption. Well, these are legitimate concerns, especially in a healthcare setting. Visual distortion, particularly inaccuracies in depth perception, could be problematic during critical procedures. And simulator sickness, with its nausea and dizziness, would obviously limit the technology's usability. Right. I mean, it's great to talk about all these amazing applications, but can we really expect widespread adoption if people are getting nauseous just putting the headset on? This is where responsible implementation is critical. We need to establish clear usage guidelines, continue researching ways to mitigate those side effects, and be committed to ongoing improvements. It's not just about the tech itself, it's about how we use it. It's about being strategic, not just slapping a cool gadget on something and hoping for the best. Now, while we're talking about being careful, what about data privacy? We're dealing with incredibly sensitive patient information here. How do we ensure that security doesn't get lost in the metaverse, so to speak? Data privacy is absolutely paramount, maybe even more so in this new world of spatial computing. We need to have ironclad encryption, secure storage that meets the highest standards, and of course, strict adherence to IPA regulations. But it goes beyond that. We also need transparency with patients. 
They need to know how their data is being used and feel confident that it's being handled responsibly. You're hitting on something crucial there. It's about trust. Because even with all the security measures in place, if patients don't trust the technology or how their data is being managed, they're less likely to embrace it. And speaking of embracing new tech, let's talk about the human side of implementation for a moment. Are healthcare professionals, even those excited by the possibilities, actually equipped to use this technology? We're talking about a whole new way of working. You're right. It's not like handing someone a new stethoscope. Uh -huh. Training is going to be absolutely essential, and not just on the technical side. We need comprehensive programs that teach healthcare professionals how to use this technology effectively with patients, addressing the ethical considerations, the potential psychological impacts, everything we've been discussing. So it's about more than just teaching someone how to put on the headset and navigate the interface. It's about integrating this technology into their workflow responsibly and ethically. What might that kind of training look like? It needs to be multifaceted. Um, we're talking hands-on workshops where they can get comfortable with the devices, online resources that provide ongoing support and updates, and perhaps even mentorship programs where early adopters can share their experiences and best practices. It's about building a support system for healthcare professionals navigating this new frontier. That makes sense. Now, let's not forget the elephant in the room when it comes to new technology, especially something this advanced. We've got to talk cost. These devices don't come cheap, do they? What are we looking at in terms of financial barriers to adoption? Cost is a significant hurdle. There's no denying that. Apple Vision Pro headsets are a significant investment, especially for smaller clinics or hospitals with limited budgets. And it's not just the upfront cost of the devices themselves. We need to factor in training, implementation, ongoing support, the whole package. So it's about demonstrating a clear turn on investment. It's one thing to say this could revolutionize healthcare, but administrators need to see how it translates into tangible benefits like improved patient outcomes or even long-term cost savings. Otherwise, it's a tough sell. Okay, let's shift gears a bit and peer into the future. Our source material hinted at some truly mind-blowing possibilities with Vision Pro. I'm talking AI-powered diagnostics, personalized treatment plans based on your unique genetic makeup, even virtual reality simulations for training the next generation of doctors. What has you most intrigued? The potential for AI integration is what really captures my imagination. The idea of a spatial computing electronic medical record, for instance. Mm -hmm. You briefly touched on it earlier, but I'm dying to understand how it might work in practice. It sounds revolutionary. Imagine this. A doctor puts on the Vision Pro headset, and suddenly, they're not just looking at a flat screen with a patient's chart. They're immersed in a 3D visualization of that patient's entire medical history. They can literally walk through a timeline of the patient's health, see 3D models of their organs from scans, call up lab results that appear as interactive graphs all around them. It would transform how doctors interact with patient data, making it easier to spot patterns and make connections that might be missed on a traditional chart. Right. Okay, that's visually stunning, but I can already sense a but coming. We've talked about data overload before. How do you ensure doctors aren't overwhelmed with this tidal wave of information, even if it's presented in a cool, interactive way? That's where AI steps in again. It's not just about visualization. It's about intelligent filtering and prioritization. The AI could analyze the patient's data and present the most relevant information at the right time, guiding the doctor's attention to potential red flags or critical details. It's about augmenting their expertise, not replacing it. Instead of drowning in data, they're given a life raft by the AI, allowing them to focus on what matters most to the patient. Speaking of AI's potential, what about diagnostics? Our source material mentioned AI analyzing medical images, maybe even surpassing human doctors in accuracy. Is that realistic? It's an area of incredible potential, albeit one that sparks a lot of debate. Imagine an AI algorithm that can analyze a mammogram, for example, okay. and detect the subtlest abnormalities that might be missed by the human eye. That's the promise of AI-powered diagnostics. Greater accuracy, faster results, potentially saving lives through early detection. That sounds like a game changer, but it also makes me think about the doctor's role in all of this. If AI can diagnose diseases, where does that leave human physicians? It's not about replacing doctors, but empowering them. Think of AI as a powerful tool that can assist them in making better, more informed decisions. It can handle the heavy lifting of data analysis and initial diagnosis, freeing up doctors to focus on what they do best communicating with patients, providing empathy and support, and making those complex judgment calls that require human intuition and experience. It's about collaboration, not replacement. So in a way, it circles back to that balance we keep discussing. 
using technology to enhance human capabilities, not diminish them. As we wrap up this deep dive, what's the key takeaway you want our listener to ponder? What's that one thought that will stick with them? This is just the tip of the iceberg. The Apple Vision Pro has the potential to fundamentally reshape healthcare as we know it. But this isn't just about cool gadgets or futuristic tech. It's about people. It's about patients receiving better care, doctors being empowered to do their best work, and all of us benefiting from a healthcare system that's more effective, more personalized, and more human-centered. But like we've been discussing, it requires careful consideration, responsible development, and a commitment to keeping the patient's well-being at the forefront. It's a future we're all shaping together. You've given us a lot to consider. This has been an incredible deep dive. To our listener, thanks for joining us as we explore the exciting world of Apple Vision Pro in healthcare. The possibilities are truly mind-blowing, and while challenges lie ahead, it's clear we're on the verge of something remarkable.